What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. Friends, today we have quite the Shinisaurus Crocodilurus or Chinese Crocodile Lizard update to give you. I mean, we're going to be going through all sorts of things. Not only are we doing a water change on the Paludarium, we're going to be taking the Shinisaurus in for their third ultrasound, second one this year, to see how those follicles or embryos are developing in the two females. So lots and lots of cool stuff to show you. After those updates are done, we're gonna be upgrading this enclosure with some pretty cool new gear. We're gonna be adding some newer lighting to the enclosure to just really max out the potential for the animal. So if you're into that, you wanna see what's going on in here, stay tuned. As always, I wanna let you guys know how to make videos about specialty pets, such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and then dinging that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday. I also want to add that with last week's question of the day, we talked about what projects and what animals you're currently breeding. And some of you shared some really interesting projects you have going on. So I just want to say thanks so much for sharing. Wish you every success with those breeding projects and really appreciate you all taking the time to share. That's pretty awesome. So cool. Okay, everybody, you know the drill. Thankfully, one of the ladies is out right now. She might jump away, but if we're lucky, she'll stick around and we can lure her into a container. Let's get this girl out. Most stress-free way possible. And lady, would you like a worm? Mmm, look at that. Okay, we got her. As you can see, the taming is really helping because they're a lot less shy. And voila, we have one female. Perfect. Okay, now for the next girl, we have to just kind of pray to the Shinisaurus gods because I'm out of earthworms. Hopefully, she will go for this. Super. We'll see what happens. So these guys like to hide in the back yeah. of the enclosure behind the wood half submerged in water and so what I'll usually do is go to the typical spots they're hiding and offer food and then they'll usually come out of hiding to eat that said food. Well <laughs> this wasn't working guys and we had a vet visit to catch. Okay guys so technical difficulties this girl does not want to come out we have to try to coax her towards the front of the enclosure which sucks. Oh man. Oh. Come on girl. Come on this way. Just come to the other side. The other side. The other side. You got this. Okay. Perfect. Okay, we got her. Obviously we try to do things as stress-free as possible whenever we can, but I guess today was an example of one that just doesn't always work. Off we go, everybody. I was gonna try without the gel, but it doesn't work. Okay, so here we have the first one. Now, I don't know if this is the one we thought was further along last time or less further along. We've definitely got some eggs developing in there and there's some texture to them. So if it was the one that was less further in development, then this could be signs of some fertilization. We weren't quite sure the last time. There's definitely something inside. I think it actually has some more texture and kind of organization to it than the last time we were looking at them, even if this is the lizard that was in further development. We've got one, two, three, something like 10 to 12 is my guess. Oh, looking good, everything else is great. You can see the liver there. And pretty much the rest of the abdomen is full of eggs. 
perfect. I'm hoping at one point to see like fetal heartbeats. Mm -hmm. like. Okay, here's our second. harder to see these eggs. We don't see as much detail inside the center of the, the developing follicles. So I would guess this one was earlier in development. Can't really see much in there, but it'd be interesting to see them side by side, what it looked like about a month ago and what it looks like now. Again, we've got one, two, three, four, probably another ten or so in this one. Awesome. Okay guys, so we just got them back. We're just waiting for Dr. Brown to give me a call from the car and explain a little bit about what happened. We'll see. No idea. Hello. Hi there. How's it going? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. So, took a look at the two of them. And the one on the top, this time I would say it's further along. Is that the one we thought was further along? The last time, I think it was labeled with the F on it. Uh, yes, yes. That okay, was the perfect. larger one, I believe. Yeah, and I think we can see some more detail in there than we did the last time. Nothing really specific yet, but I think it's a bit more organized is maybe the best way to say it. <laughs> and then the other one, I think we do see some progression maybe. It'll be interesting, I think, to see that one if it ever ends up looking like the other one did originally because then we can really track mm -hmm. almost the very beginning. Mm, interesting. And again, I think there's like at least 10 eggs in both of them. Sometimes it's difficult when we double count them, but yeah. a few for sure. Oh my goodness. I'm curious to see like if, if you feel that there's that little development. I mean, I, I, I don't know if that's what you meant, but by the sounds of it, minimal change. It almost sounds to me like this could be one of those circumstances where people have documented the animals I guess carrying on their gestation through winter dormancy and having yeah. a spring birth because I have a yeah. hard time imagining how these animals would give birth before yeah, fall or winter or something mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem <laughs> I think so you mentioned that the gestation was probably like 11 months right uh I think it was nine or maybe okay. nine to 11 that's quite possible yeah. It was a bit over four weeks ago, I so think. It would be like February or so at nine months, and then that could kind of time out. Then, I mean, it could be that we're just a little bit later starting them. Like they might have just yeah. conceived later in the spring than they might have in the wild, or yeah, maybe it's. But mm -hmm. I guess if, if we're the very earliest and it was nine months a month ago, and that brings us to, I think, February, and if it's like one month longer than that, that's March, which is pretty good hatching time for a lot of animals depending on the climate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see how the follicles develop. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't look like just random, <laughs> I don't know. No, I think so. okay. The second one, still not convinced yet, they could be infertile. I don't see really anything in there. Okay. I was worried that the, if the second one was actually the one we thought was further along, that that would be a sign that like the edge of whatever they're encased in is calcified and we might not be able to see it much going forward. Uh -huh. But provided it's the way that I was hoping it is with respect to which lizard is which, then I think we should be able to track it from here and I'll be interested to see what happens with the second one if it starts organizing a bit more. I would say it's probably different than the last time, but I'd really have to compare the photos side by side. Mm -hmm. She should be able to do pretty easily. Okay, okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much. Excellent. Yeah, very I guess. interesting. Yeah, and do you feel that the time that we're meeting up here for these ultrasounds yeah. is sufficient, or do we need to not do it as often if there's minimal change? I mean, I don't mind, it's just up to you. Yeah, I'd probably plan for one more month, and if, again, we're seeing just slight changes like we are this time, then I'd maybe go to two months. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, just to see how things are going. Okay, perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, good luck, and let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> Okay, very interesting. I have not seen the footage yet. Guys, there's nothing worse than stressing out my animals, so 
we're just gonna get them back into their home as quickly as possible. Off she goes. And then we'll go with this girl. Oh, that was a close one. I was not expecting that. Whew. She just bolted out of nowhere. So there you go everybody, pretty exciting stuff with the Shinisaurus, hopefully we're going to have more answers by the next ultrasound in a month or so, we'll know if that smaller female is in fact gravid, and we'll definitely see some cool progress on the other female who is. Here I am just doing some weekly maintenance on the enclosure, if you haven't seen my video on how to clean the pallet area, you can check out the link up above. Here I am putting your suggestions to work by cleaning out the filter sponges with the dirty aquarium water to prevent losing the beneficial bacteria. And yeah, I'm really happy with how this paludarium looks. It's just one of my favorite enclosures in my home. Doing some more siphoning here and we're just about done. Lastly, you've heard me say in the past, for cleaning glass, I like to take about 25 parts white vinegar to 75 parts reverse osmosis water and use this to just spray down the glass. The acidity helps remove some of the calcium buildup and then I just take a small blade and carefully scratch it and wipe it off with paper towel. It really helps the glass stay clean and makes the tank look great. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all if you could have your own paludarium enclosure like the one behind me, what species of reptile would you keep and why? Let me know in the comment section down below and as always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Awesome. Well friends, I want to take a quick moment to thank my newest patron over on Patreon. Thank you so much to John for becoming my newest channel supporter. Really appreciate it and it means so much to me to have your monthly contributions going towards the animals, going towards the channel, helping sustain everything I'm doing here. Very kind and sincere of you and I look forward to getting to know you better on the platform. For anyone else who's interested in learning about how they can support this channel further and seeing about the different tiers they can unlock, you can check out the link down below to my Patreon page and learn more about that there. Thank you for your consideration. Okay everybody, so now what we're gonna do is upgrade the lighting on this enclosure because I went full out and decided to purchase a new Arcadia 51 watt LED Jungle Dawn fixture. I also bought a Arcadia 39 watt Pro T5 UVB kit. So this is the T5 fixture. I'm really excited here. Now, these are expensive fixtures, but they're totally worth the price because this will provide really good quality UVB for the animals and the lighting that this will provide are gonna be amazing. So what we're actually going to be doing is just to kind of consolidate things up here. This Jungle Dawn, which is like insanely bright as you can see, is gonna be coming off, replaced by this larger one and then this Really nice Zoomed LED and UVB hood is going to be coming off uh, entirely because with the large jungle dawn, I don't think we'll need it anymore. And we're going to replace that with the 6% Arcadia UVB kit. So, isn't that right, mister? You excited, sir, for your new lighting? So I don't know about you guys, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to show the difference in how bright this is going to be when we have the jungle dawn on here. I'm turning off my ring light, so this is just a completely natural jungle dawn in full action. I mean, you can see how much of the light is coming off that fixture. This is without, and this is with the small jungle dawn on. It makes a huge difference. But what we're going to do now is install the Arcadia lighting. So let's go ahead and do that and see how things look. I'm so excited to do this. So we saw what the enclosure looked like with no ring light. Okay, so we're gonna turn that off. Right now, all that's illuminating this enclosure is the UVB light. And now we're gonna put the 51 watt Jungle Dawn on there. And look at the difference, everybody. It's actually insane. Wow, that is what I'm talking about. Mind blowing. What I love is because of how bright the light is, 
we can actually see into the aquatic portion of the paludarium so much better. And I think the fish are even going to appreciate this even more as well. Love it. This looks incredible. Oh man. Everything is just looking so rich. The color, the water change made a huge difference in here. Hey buddy, what are you doing? I was just giving me super warm some spaghetti squash. Let's see if he uh, really wants to grab some. There you go. You got him. Wow, the two for one special. Alright everybody, I just want to take the time to say thanks so much for watching today's video. I'm really excited to give you guys more updates on the Shinosaurus over here. And hopefully we're going to have some cool things to share in the coming months because it looks like they're doing really well and from what Dr. Brown can see, it looks like at least one of the females is progressing. I think we'll know if the second one too by a few months from now because either there's going to be some development or not and we can be confident about what's going on there for then. So without further ado, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you again for watching. If you'd like to see more videos about Chinese crocodile lizards, check out the playlist up above and see you all on Tuesday for our next video. Take care everybody. Bye.